Are y'all ready? Truth Nation, I hope. I wish you could just get out your seat, but some of y'all might be driving. I don't want you to be. <laughs> I don't want you to be unsafe. <laughs> we have on the truth line. Get ready, y'all. She is here, and I'm gonna pass the mic to tell you because again, I'm so excited that I won't be able to be professional. The one, the only, the living legend, Swin Cash. Good morning, Swin. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Hey. Swin, you know we had to get the, the, the hype intro for you. How are you doing? I'm good. I love it. I love it. Oh, I need that energy this morning. This, this cool drop-off has been real this morning, so I appreciate y'all. See y'all, and she's a great mom. We forgot to mention that. What's wrong with us, Telly? Look, you said every. I'm sure you mentioned it at some point. You said two beautiful kids. You did say I that. I did say two beautiful. Okay, good. All right. All right, Swin. We cannot express how happy and excited we are to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for because we not we know you're not only busy with combine, but you're also busy with family, being great, being sought after. You got a big summit coming up in New Orleans this summer. I'm just going to be quiet and let Telly <laughs> get to the real stuff about who Swin Cash is. First off, Swin, uh, this is Telly here, and I am so excited because I am someone who has followed your career back when you were at UConn, which I had to school Denise on in 2002. Why you got to call me out? No, because, I mean, you can look. It's impossible to know all of the things that Swin has accomplished, but in 2002, you led UConn to an undefeated 39-0 and season that capped off with one of your two NCAA championships. But before we get into a lot of that, you're a little girl with a basketball and a dream, and you have goals. You're outside of Pittsburgh growing up. Did you ever think you would one day be a Naismith Memorial Hall of Famer? Ah, wow, that's a lot. Um, good morning, and um, just thank you. Uh, listen, I, I, there's a lot of things that I didn't think about um, that would happen. But I knew my grandma was praying over me for a really long time that baby you just different. Um, and so I think my my foundation was always set in whatever it is that you can lean into and just be great and give it your all. You may not be the, the best at it, but it's gonna take you somewhere. So that's kinda how I've always lived, you know, my life is just kind of leaning into whatever my passion and opportunity was. So two time NCAA champ three-time WNBA champion, played 15 professional seasons, and after playing basketball, you went to the booth and you were working with MSG Network doing some New York Knicks pre- and post-game shows. And, of course, a lot of athletes kind of take that route. But what was different for you? What made you know that talking about the game or being on television wasn't the path that was destined for you? Uh, well, you know, one of the things that's really interesting is, and I don't share it as much or probably probably need to do more of that, is that whenever I played at UConn, um, you think back to uh, those early days you talked about, I was able to see and touch and feel and have conversations with Robin Roberts, who for me, I looked at Oprah, I looked at her as, as women that were on TV that were black women um, in spaces that, that I loved. And and so having kind of watched Robin throughout my collegiate career, when I charted my path, the day I got drafted in 2002 to the Detroit Shock, um, that's the day I started planning for my post-career. And so as I was playing professionally in the WNBA overseas, I would take breaks in between the Olympics and work for ESPN, work um, at MSG, work, uh, you know, I work for Dumber Networks, Network, Turner, and get that experience and that exposure. So, you know, my pathway was charted once I retired to go into that space because that's what I was planning for. Um, and so to have that opportunity when I when I retired um, was just a blessing. We're drawn on Truth Be Told with DT and Telly by none other than Vice President of Basketball Operations and Team Development for the New Orleans Pelicans 
and Hall of Famer, Naismith Hall of Famer, Swin Cash. And we're talking about her journey from the playing court to where she is now being an executive. And Swin, what motivated you? You just talked about how Robin it really kind of helped shape your career, uh, your post career. And you were thinking about this the day you got drafted by the Detroit Shock. But you moved on from your television career to an executive role and not just in the WNBA, but in the NBA. And just talk about your journey, not only doing something that very few women were able to do before you, but your path to getting there in a male dominated sport like the NBA. Yeah. So, you know, the the fun thing about it is, is when you talk about the game, you love it, you're passionate about it. It still keeps you connected. And through my opportunities working at Turner, uh, and that's why I always tell people, you never know who you run into, who you connect with. um, So always be open. I ran into my current boss, uh, David Griffin, and we worked together um, at Turner covering the NBA at the time. And um, I hadn't known him long, but obviously he had background in the NBA and also his, his years uh, starting out in the WNBA. So he, as one night when I was leaving, he said to me, he said, you know what, I'm doing some interviews, but if I get one of these jobs, I'm going to give you a call. And I looked at him and I was like, okay, sounds good. Like, good luck. Thanks. Um, and really, you know, I didn't think much back to it until I was actually on set and, uh, you know, it came through the ticker that he had gotten a job with the Pelicans. And I'm like, oh. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, as I continue to kind of listen to to that, um, you know, he reached out and when he started building out his team, you know, he we talked. I came down to New Orleans, had an opportunity to, to sit with him, understand what he was trying to do. He knew there were a lot of things that he, he, he needed to get done, but you know, he just said to me, he said, You know what, I don't know what it looks like, but I know that I would love for you to join the team. You're probably gonna have to wear multiple hats because there's a lot of stuff. We just got to roll up our sleeves, sleeves and get to it. And so after, he, you know, we had that conversation, he also hired um, Trajan Langdon as the GM. And it just felt like a good fit. So I went back home, had a conversation with my husband, and I said, well, you know, what are your thoughts about all this? We were comfortable. Denise will tell you, we were comfortable in New York. We had our family. We had support, you know. And he said, you sit on television and talk about all the time what you would do if you were on a team. Well, there's your opportunity to do it. And I looked at him, first of all, you know how Denise, I looked at him like, are you crazy? Was a little sad <laughs> I can visualize I that like, look right now, Swin. <laughs> right, right. But you love it. And and that's why I'm here, really, is like the love and the support. Like my husband was like, I'm behind you. If I need to switch up some stuff, like I can be mobile enough for like with my job and my businesses. And so that's the, that's the leap of faith that we took. And I'm super excited. I'm, I mean, not super, but I'm excited Um, about what we're continuing to build here in New Orleans and the opportunity. Um, And there's ebbs and flow of everything, but to be in the room, to be able to grow, learn, and um, make sure you are helping to to, to build something sustainable is is really important. And Uh, Go ahead, Denise. Okay, so Swin, you know how I am. So I'm going to go ahead and just ask the, the questions that I know a lot of black women that are listening to this show. See, Telly, he's a two-time Emmy winning, Emmy award winning journalist. And you an know aspiring play by play guy. She yes. was just talking about relationships. So I know Joel right. Myers it, getting a little up in age. So if you want a black play by play guy, I'll let your boy. It ain't a I lot of it. us out there. Go shoot in your the, shot, in the Telly. NBA. Oh, of course I shoot am. Shoot your shot. Yeah, I know that's before right. you get to your black women questions, because <laughs> I can't ask a black woman question. I'm not a black woman. But I am a black man who's a play by play guy. So and then a lot of those in the NBA swing. So holla back. All right, Denise, I'm mad at you. All right. So before I ask Swin Cash this question, I need for everybody to understand this. Swin Cash is one of the highest ranking executives, not just in the WNBA, in the NBA, y'all. She is one of the highest ranking. And what I meant to say, not just WNBA, because she is an executive for the New Orleans Pelicans in sports Period. Professional sports, Swin Cash is a trailblazing executive. And what I mean by that is that for many of you that have heard of Swin, what you see doesn't even accurately depict her kindness, her dedication to supporting any and everybody, in particular black women, black people. She, Her trajectory, it, it's not even, it's just incredible. 
So, Swin, there's a lot going on. Thank you. Uh, of course. Mm-hmm. We're so glad to have you here. There's so much going on in terms of black women's portrayal and image in sports, whether it's the NCAA, whether it's the WNBA. And now, you know, the NBA, are they're hiring black women. What are some of the things that you're witnessing that makes you really, really smile? And what are some of the opportunities that you see where you're like, we still have work to do based on what we've seen over the recent months regarding black women, black women's imaging, and how we're portrayed when it comes to sports and in the front office? Yeah, so I will say one of the things that I'm really happy about that I'm seeing is is more companies, organizations realizing that we we don't understand it. We 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 need to to bring in people. We need to be in these DEI spaces and give people um, the ability to do the work. Be the give people the ability to to help foster a better work environment for Black women. And um, a lot of that is truly just understanding. Like I, there's not these huge shifts that need to be made, but. They are, there are within these spaces uh, concerns because a lot of times when you come in, you could have the skill set to do a number of things. You could come in and, you know, we come in, Denise, and we have the ability to, and you know, you have to juggle two balls. We can juggle four and you can be like, whoa, how do you do that? <laughs> right. Um, but the issue is, is that we're a lot of times how we show up is more um what people focus on than anything else. And and that to me does a disservice to the work that we could do, that organizations can do to not only support black women, but to, to support the learning that needs to be done with other um, gender, race, um, people within your workplace. And that is something that I, I'm happy to say that I do see more movement on that front that people are trying to bring in um, more people to help with their workforce. The other part of it that I see is that black women are just tired and unapologetic about having to try to foster this narrative about who we are coming to work. Um, the different tropes of we're angry, we're this, we're that, like it's so tired, it's so old, like you need some new ones. Um, and so for me, I love the fact that people are showing up. Um, they're using their voices to say, look, this is how I feel. I would like to get to this place. How do we get there? Advocating for themselves is very, very important. And having allies and having people who are advocating for you as well. Um, it's no longer a point where just, you know, coworkers or uh, people in leadership can remain silent. You cannot do that when you're trying to, as I like to say, the best room for, to, to get work done is diversity of thought. And the only way you get diversity of thought is to have the diversity in the room. And that's what I'm uh, really happy to see, that there are some strides being made there. But there's this, there's this huge juggernaut called the media, and they are going to control narratives again and again and again. But when you have these, these new platforms, whether it is social media, whether it is podcasts, whether it is um, talk shows, um, whether it is your radio shows, when you have opportunity to align and have black women tell their truth and to speak and have these platforms, that's where the real change is starting to, I, I think the real shift is starting to, to change a little bit for me. Truth be told, with DT and Telly being joined by none other than Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famer and Vice President of Basketball Operations and Team Development for the New Orleans Pelicans, Swin Cash and Swin, we really appreciate you taking the time telling us your journey. And I just want to piggyback off of what you just said, because you have been using your platform to advocate for black women and black people for a long time now. Many may not remember in 2016, you were fined five hundred dollars for wearing a warm up shirt that had hashtag Black Lives Matter and hashtag Dallas Five. And so you knew even then the platform you had and what made you and your teammates exercise your rights and using that platform to do that even back then. Yeah. uh, I always say that, you know, there were always women that, that came before us and I give a lot of credit to kind of my, 
mom and my aunts and, and uncles and family that um, raised me in a way where I had a clear picture of what this, you know, world and our society was and what I was coming into. Unfortunately, we always um, hear about the talk and, you know, getting that at a very young age, being brought up in a way to be unapologetic about who God created me to be. Um, I, I've i always just had this thing of, of of leadership to me is being able to, to understand um, the people that are around you and where you are um, at that point in time in society and opportunities um, to use your platform. And I think back then, when you think about our stance, what was so crazy to me is that, um, you know, Black Lives Matter, just the the whole meaning of it getting hijacked and what it meant to Black people was very difficult. But to have a warm-up shirt that also had Dallas Five, and if, you you know, people go back and your audience looks at what happened, it was yes, dealing remember. with an incident um, of also supporting you know, the police and the situation that happened in, in Dallas, but people couldn't separate the two. So that's when I, I knew just personally, like we were just in a very, very difficult time as a society, especially for, for black people. But the reason why we did it um, is because you, you look at the WNBA and the makeup of the WNBA, women for so long have gone through the suppression in a lot of different ways. We understand what it means to to be marginalized <laughs> and so whenever you have a platform where you tell the media look we're not going to talk about sports today i know you want to talk about the game but here's what's important to us and when you have a collective and you have strength in numbers that's the way that a movement's supposed to happen but then you go from that point of the protest um to what's after that and i think the work that has continued to be done after that even to this day with the WNBPA. And the WNBA is so significant. I think you look at what happened to getting um, uh, um, the congressman, uh, Mr. Warmack, um, getting him elected in, in Atlanta. That was directly a push from WNBA players using their platform in the bubble. So you see um, kind Love of. Love it. Wow. I did not know that, Swin. Yes. Had no idea. That's yeah, so dope. Yeah. Because that owner yeah. down there yeah. was on, on one. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'll there's a lot of this history within the W on that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We're joined by Swin Cash, Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famer and Vice President of Basketball Ops for the New Orleans Pelicans. And Swin has been sharing her journey about from the playing court to her executive role and the challenges that have come with that. And Swin, we really appreciate you sharing your story and I know Denise has is, is got one more for you, but I, I know that you have answered everything and you are even more intriguing after talking to you than what you were Isn't before talking to you. Swin is do- I, I love me some Swin, and she's just who I consider a sister. And the more that I'm growing and evolving, the more that I, I get why Swin is who she is. Speaking of which, Swin... No pun intended, but do, do you have time? Do you have time? You have a few more minutes that, that you can share? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Swin says she got time. Now, listen. I got time today. Because so, she is busy. She's making the time, actually. She's not, she's not giving us. She's making the time. Swin Cash, one of the highest ranking executives in the NBA, is making the time to hold a summit in New Orleans. And this begins... June 28th, correct? Yes, correct. June 28th through July 1st in New Orleans. And the summit is called She's Got Time. One of the things I love about this summit is that Swin, with her brand and her platform, has curated a single event with the top women, all races, all ethnicities, all walks of life that are killing the game in professional sports as well as collegiate sports under one roof to pour into women regarding, and I and I personally, Swin, I don't like the word empowerment because it oftentimes feels like I got to seek power from somebody else, but we'll talk about that when I'm in New Orleans. <laughs> but Swin, when you woke up, when you woke up that morning and you said, I've got to create a summit. I've got to create a platform where people have exposure 
to traditional audiences that don't see these types of leaders, i.e. women of color, white, i.e. women of color in sports. Can you walk us through like what prompted you to think about that? What was your vision and what do you want people to gain or experience during the She's Got Time Women in Sports Summit in New Orleans beginning June 28th? Yeah, so I'm super excited about um, this summit and the, I would like to say the, uh, how She's Got Time really came about was last year. You all talked about going into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, As I was writing my speech for that, and if you get an opportunity, your audience to go back and listen to that speech, it'll kind of, you'll understand even more about She's Got Time. Uh, But as I was going through that journey and reflecting on like my career, it was, it felt like a chapter that was closing and I wanted to know what was next. What were you going to use, you know, your platform for, what were you going to, to make kind of the legacy of, of, of pulling in other women. And Denise, I can tell you right now, ever since I took this job with the Pelicans, I've gone into numerous arenas. And when I'm in arenas, there's been executives, there've been other women, men that have come up and said, you know, how can I find another you? Like, and I'm like, I'm not a unicorn. I'm not. But the realization came to my mind is that a lot of time there are spaces where women who are doing the work or who want opportunities don't have a place to convene or feel like the, 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 the net is cast wide enough. And for me, I wanted to lead with multiculture in regards to black women feeling like this is a safe space under She's Got Time. There are a number of organizations out there that are doing great work. Uh, wise and women in sports. There's a di- number of different ones that are doing great work. But for me, I wanted to curate something. And the word that we use, and we, we are going to be intentional about, Denise, and you know this because language is important, is our intergenerational connectivity. We have OGs of the game that have all this knowledge, and we have young women um, that are coming out that want an opportunity but don't know what it looks like. And so for me, um, you know, She's Got Time Summit is not just a summit that's going to be here in New Orleans. It's going to kick off. It leads right into Essence Weekend. So if y'all want to come on down, grab your tickets, go to She's Got Time dot com, learn more about it. But um, we're also going to have an opportunity for women to, to gain membership and to see the work that we're doing and these spaces. And this company is going to keep thriving. It's bigger than Swingcast, but it, it started with me because I feel like this is a space that we have to to lean into. And as I continue my work as an executive and growing the NBA, I want to make sure that I'm bringing my sisterhood, my women with me, um, and they can help and expand. So there'll be mentorship. There's opportunities for in real life experience. There's also opportunity for our digital footprint. So this is, this is, this is going to continue to grow, but people can go to, she's got time to learn more about it. And it just really started from my passion of what's next after going into the Naismith Hall of Fame. And I'm so excited about the support that I've gotten from uh, the New Orleans Pelicans. And obviously Ms. Gail Benson is also going to be there. Um, a number of executives from the NBA, NFL, NHL, I mean, across all, all different walks of life, like you said, Denise, this is a time for us to convene, to create an ecosystem that we're all proud of. Swin, who would not support you? I can't think of one person on earth that would say no <laughs> to Swin Cash. And as she mentioned, Aww. please visit she's got time.com. This will be a kickoff to a series of summits. And again, as Swin had mentioned, this is where if you want to be something great, you have to surround yourself with greatness. So please make sure that you visit the website. And as Swin had mentioned, this is going to segue into Essence Festival. But the summit is June 28th through June 30th at the Hyatt Regency in New Orleans, Louisiana. You can visit the website right now. You can register. I am so honored and humbled. I'll be representing Milwaukee. I will be one of the speakers during the summit. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm trying to think of some ways that maybe I can incentivize incentivize people from Milwaukee to attend. Let me think about that a little bit more. Maybe it's a ticket giveaway. Of course. Uh, I thought it was uh, just a women's you, well, you gonna no. be my You're going to be my assistant. Okay, there it is. They need to see, you know. <laughs> 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 Swin, Swin Cash. See, y'all say Naismith. I'm just like Hall of Famer. UN, NCAA, but UConn. But there's different Hall of Fame. She's in oh. like four or five of She's them, in four. I, Yeah, that's why you got to be <laughs> specific. Then not to give you the mic for the reason. Uh, yeah. See, then not give you the mic for the reason. <laughs> Swin, we cannot thank you accurately with just the English language of how much we appreciate you being here 
on Truth Be Told with DT and Telly. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for everything that you're doing now and will continue to do as someone who, again, I consider a sister, a mentor, an idol, and just an overall dope human being. Swin Cash, we love you. We're going to see you in New Orleans June 28th through June 30th in New Orleans at She's Got Time Summit. Thanks again. Let's give it up for Swin Love y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Swin. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Y'all come on down to the second line. Love y'all. Bye-bye. Love you, too. We <laughs> definitely will. Swig Cash, y'all, here on The Truth Be Told with DT and Telly. We don't, this is what we do, Telly. This is what yeah, we do. We, yeah. we are bringing y'all top tier. That was dope. Wasn't that dope? That was dope. And she's in the midst of combine. Yeah. Look, more to come. I don't even know. Like, we could probably just drop the mic right now, walk off the studio, let Ben just do the rest. Because we, we we killed it. We got Swing Cash. We got other great black leaders coming to y'all on The Truth Be Told with DT and Telly on the new 1017 The Truth.